Here's the secret sauce. If you've listened to the podcast, you've heard this. If you haven't listened to the podcast, this will be something new. Everybody thinks that there's got to be some big, massive secret to running and being more creative you know, when thinking about ideas. The fundamental process breaks down into FIRE plus PO. So what is FIRE plus PO? FIRE stands for F is focus. The biggest fallacy when you're coming up with ideas is lack of focus, right? Bring a bunch of people together and say, come up with a new product. And I get this request all the time, because I'm with running the innovation office. Phil, hurry up. Get a team together and let's come up with some new product ideas. Well, that, that's kind of a vague objective, right? What's the focus? Is it, let's go find a new consumer product aimed at 17 to 25 year old men and women who spend a certain amount of time online? Or is it, go, you know, we just, I just had a customer down here who happens to be in the healthcare industry. Let's go, let's go look at tech, bringing technologies to improve the out, you know, surgical outcomes in surgical suites, which is actually a project that we are doing. So what's the focus when you start thinking about it? By bringing focus, you, you actually bring a much more clear objective of what success means. If you've solved the problem for that focus, you know that you've been successful. So we actually apply what we call a 360 degree view that we look at when we look at innovations. Because it's not just products and technologies. We look at everything from business model innovation, go to market, channel, logistics and distribution. We don't do anything small here. 169 countries, if I build a product, I gotta go figure out how I'm gonna manufacture and ship it to all those countries. And so we look across all those to ensure that we're not missing anything, we're not forgetting anything in the process of developing the innovations. I is the ideation phase. So how do you generate the ideas? Now there's 10,000 tools out there, whether it's whack on the side of the head or you name it, brainstorming, Delphi method, big long list. One of the, one of the approaches that I'm a big fan of is, is asking good questions during the ideation phase, right? And think about just running an ideation phase, right? We all done it. Let's get 10 of our best and brightest people, put them in a room, come up with a bunch of ideas. Someone goes, woo, 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 woo. I'll scribe, you know? I'll, I'll write it on the flip chart. Great, someone takes the flip chart. You run the session, ideas, come up with, come up with some new product ideas. You know, you get a quick burst of ideas, then it starts to slow down, and then finally someone says, okay, well, let's wrap it up for today. And someone goes, okay, I'll type them up, and I'll send them out to everybody. Great. So someone types them up, they send them out. What happens? Nothing. Nothing ever happens. A couple reasons. One is, is the quality of the ideas you get is based on the quality of the question. So questions like, come up with a new product idea. The problem being is, is that as the, us in our human brains, <clears throat> when we've answered the question in our own minds, we stop looking. So it's like the analogy of someone goes, oh, I lost my car keys. Okay, you go, oh, where'd you find them? Oh, I found them in the last place I looked. Okay, well, who keeps looking after you found the car keys? <laughs> it's always the last place. But once you've found them, you stop looking. The same thing happens with the questions. If you ask a simple question, once each person in the room thinks that the question's been satisfied, they stop searching for more ideas. They've answered the question. So carefully understanding the questions you ask becomes important. So, you know, for instance, one of the common questions that we'll use in a session is, is under what assumptions does your industry operate? Right, so my case, the PC industry, what assumptions does that industry operate on? Well, you operate under the assumption of you manufacture in Asia, you ship, the, you know, you design here, you ship it to Asia, they manufacture it, they put it on a boat or put it on a plane, you ship it, you ship it, you put it into retail, right? Customer buys it through retail, right? Da -da 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 -da. Now go through each of those assumptions and say, what if the opposite were true? What if you didn't design it in the US? What if you didn't manufacture it in China? What if you did, what if you went to a radical idea that says, guess what, you went to micromanufacturing in every country? So literally every country operated independently versus aggregating. Does that a plus or a minus? But those are the kinds of questions that force you to get beyond the simple, 
yes, no answers, right? And so actually out on the blog, I don't know, I think I've, I don't know, there's someone, someone's actually, actually aggregated up a list. There's like 75 questions in the Killer Innovations card deck. If I thought about it, I would have brought the card deck this morning. Um, but there's also a Twitter feed called Killer Questions. So every week, actually on Tuesdays, Tuesday mornings is automatic, you know, I put out one of the questions every week. But it's about when during the ideation phase, whether you use brainstorming method or Delphi method or whatever approach you want to use, frame the question up front that you force people to look beyond the obvious. Now the other problem is when everybody works on the idea is the ranking of the idea, R. Right? Because you come out with the meeting, you don't have, a, you don't, there's no, what's the best idea you should work on? Right? You got a, you got a great list. But of that list, what's the one idea that everybody agrees is the idea? Now you're going to do, okay, which idea? Everybody raise their hand. That doesn't work either. So we've actually, and everybody thinks we've got to have HP, we must have this wildly sophisticated ranking method. It is so brain dead simple, and it works. Five questions that you have to answer on any idea. You have to answer yes to the first three, one of them. So out of the first three questions, you have to be able to answer yes to one of the first three questions. First question, does this idea fundamentally change the customer's experience or expectation? Are you delivering something meaningfully new to the customer beyond what their current expectations are? Right? Two, does this idea fundamentally change your competitive positioning? In my case, HP. Third is, is does this idea fundamentally change the economics of the industry? I gotta be able to answer yes to one of those three, because if I'm not, then what am I doing? I'm basically doing what somebody, what everybody else is doing. So if I assume I can answer yes to one of those three, then I have to be able to answer yes to the next two. That being, does it, do you have a contribution to make? Great with having an idea, but you gotta have an opinion. You gotta have something that you're gonna deliver as part of this. In the case of HP, you know, we have billions of dollars in cash. 46,000 engineers, right? Now that's not managers, that's not supervisors. We have 46,000 engineers who sit at benches every day and design products. 450 PhD researchers at HP Labs. Lots of capability. We can go do lots of things. But where's our core focus? Where's our expertise? What is the contribution that we can make? And then the last question is, will this generate sufficient margin? How do you make money on this? And we, and we put that as the last question, not the first question. Because if you answer the first ones and you've got a compelling idea that changes the expectation and changes the economics, and we've got, you know, we got a core expertise to believe, you would assume that you'd be able to figure out at some point how to make money. Do that ranking exercise, and we score them on a zero to five. So zero to five of does this change the expectation? Zero meaning doesn't, it's basically the same as the competitors. Five means, oh my God, this thing's absolutely amazing. Same thing on all the others, and then you just total them all up. And you find that what we, when, we, when we do sessions, there's a natural filtering process. You see a group of ideas at the very, very top, and you see a bunch of ideas at the bottom. The ones at the top are the ones that you, that you focus on and iterate on. So it's just keeping it really, really simple. But without the ranking process, you never quite get that gut check that you're working on the best idea. You're just working on an idea, not the best idea.